Hey folks, I'm Rob Franick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Princeton Review. If you've joined us over the last several weeks of time, you'll know that on this COVID-19 series, we're talking about COVID-19 and its repercussion on higher education. And we're trying to answer questions and issues that come directly from students in short video segments that deal with admission issues and testing changes and test cancellations. Well, today, folks, we received very welcome news from the Association of American Medical Colleges. That's, of course, AAMC, who, who have been very clear clear in their direction that there will likely be no further cancellations of the MCAT exams. And folks, even though it's a bitter pill to recall this, we're going to say this out loud, eight such past administrations of the MCAT have been canceled, but AAMC's direction is very clear. They are trying to ensure that there will not be a ninth cancellation. What this all means for you as a future MCAT test taker is that the May 29th administration of the MCAT is very likely to happen. If not in all locations, then in many locations. The same goes for the following administrations on the books for the MCAT, June 5th, June 19th, June 20th, and of course other scheduled dates after that. In addition, AMC has added three new MCAT testing dates. They are as follows, June 28th, September 28th and September 29th. Now the reason that the AAMC is adding all of these new test dates obviously are for those students that were registered. For those past eight administrations that were now canceled will now be able to take the MCAT. In addition to that, the AAMC is putting in procedure to ensure that students can maintain social distancing during those MCAT exams. And the ways that they're doing, or one of the ways that they're doing that, is they're making the testing times, three separate and different testing times per testing dates that I just named. So instead of the vanilla one-size-fits-all 8 a.m. start time of the MCAT in years past, there will now be three different start times for each of the three, or each of the testing dates that I had just mentioned. The three start, state, start times, pardon me, are as follows, 6.30 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 6 p.m. Now, there may be some variation per testing center, but generally speaking, those are the three different testing times. Now, to facilitate those three different testing times per testing date, the AAMC has made the additional decision to shorten the MCAT. So no longer will the MCAT be the seven and a half hour marathon that it was in years past. The new trimmed down near marathon MCAT is going to be clocking in at five hours and 45 minutes. Now, AMC is incredibly pointed in their direction that students will be tested on all four sections of that exam. Students are still responsible for tackling the concepts and the skills that were required of them in the longer format of the exams. Additionally, your MCAT scores will not change. Students will still receive back their four section scores as well as one combined scores. Now, I'm going to look to my dear colleague, Dr. Anita, Anita pardon me, Pascal. Dr. Pascal, as I had mentioned in past videos that we've done here on YouTube, leads our medical school admission counseling group. Now, Dr. Pascal has been very clear in her speculation over the last couple of months that out of all of the big standardized tests, MCAT was the least likely candidate to ever become an at home test. But let's remind ourselves that other testing companies have made the opposite decision. The LSAT is now at home. The GMAT now at home. The GRE now at home. And for nearly 3 million high school students moving on to college, they will be taking their all of their AP exams at home as well. But Dr. Pascal, again, is very clear in her direction. To you, as future physicians, your work will likely not be at home. You will truly be on the front lines. So our team at the Princeton Review want to recognize that although in that five hour, 45 minute new incarnation of the MCAT, you very well be wearing a mask during that time, but we know of no other student who is going to be more expertly able to handle those situations in a testing environment. Um, we also recognize that you as future medical school students are likely worried about the effect of this new trimmed down exam and the canceled administrations of the MCAT and how it will have an effect on your chances to get into medical school. And our general advice is to try to not be so anxious, but we understand that that is easier said than done. But let's remind ourselves that medical schools themselves are well 
aware of the testing changes and the cancellations that have happened around the MCAT. And AMC has been very clear that they are working directly with medical schools and encouraging flexibility from an admission perspective. Now let's shift our focus just a little bit to MCAS. They have also delayed the first transmission deadline to medical schools by two weeks. So schools will now receive that first batch pardon me, of applications submitted through MCAS on July 10th. Now folks, the one takeaway that our full team at the Princeton Review hope that you'll glean from this video is this, that now there is some certainty around the MCAT. There is simply less uncertainty than there was just a week ago. And although nothing is guaranteed in times of a global pandemic, but what we believe at the Princeton Review is that now you can start to make solid plans for your testing and your training. And honestly, folks, if there's one group primed to do that in these difficult times, we understand that it is you. Um, we also want you to know that we are there for you. As I had mentioned, Dr. Pascal leads our medical school admission counseling team. We have a full free resource for a medical school management tool. Um, please do reach out to us directly if those are valuable to you. We have a whole host of MCAT prep services at the Princeton Review. We are sure one that is right for you. Please know that our full team at the Princeton Review is cheering you on. If we can be of help to you, do reach out, call us, find out from us on our website, those offerings, or reach out to us on social, social uh, media channels. Of course, folks, I'm Rob Franick. I'm editor-in-chief here at the Princeton Review, rooting for you all the way. Be well and be safe. Take care.